This morning I would like to begin a new series entitled The Battlefield of the Mind. As we continue to press through Paul's letters to the Colossians, we are now beginning to move into the area of the book where Paul is actually doing his teaching. The last two weeks, we crossed the bridge that Paul built from his introductory matters to his teaching section by spending two weeks focusing on the ministers and the membership of the church of Jesus Christ. And now as Paul begins to confront directly the issues that the church at Colossae was facing, we come to a section where Paul deals with those things that attack our mind and attempt to <coughs> shift our focus and our thinking from the only true way to God. And so I would invite you to look in Colossians chapter 2, and we will be reading verses 8 through 10 this morning, as we compare the battle of Christ versus worldly philosophy. If you would, I'd ask you to stand to honor God's presence upon His Word, Colossians chapter 2, verses 8 through 10. And the Word of the Lord says this, this morning. Be careful that no one takes you captive through philosophy and empty deceit based on human tradition, based on the elemental forces of the world, and not based on Christ. For in Him the entire fullness of God's nature dwells bodily, and you have been filled with Him who is the head over every ruler and authority. Let us pray. Our Father, as we come and we gather in your house this morning, we set our hearts and our minds upon you. Lord, we would ask that your Holy Spirit would open our minds to your word. That the truths that are contained within might be revealed to us today and that our lives may be changed as a result of it. Our Father, we come to you because only you can answer the great questions of life. And it's in your most precious and holy name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Paul, in this passage, calls all believers to be careful of captivity at the hands of worldly philosophy. The word translated be careful means to take heed, to look out, and or to guard yourself. This guarding is necessary because of the ability of worldly philosophy to capture those who are ill-prepared to face the challenges it presents. The word captive in this passage means to lead one into slavery. And thus the effects of worldly philosophy is slavery for those who are captured by it. We all desire the answers to the great questions of life. Each and every one of us have asked ourselves the great questions of life in hope of finding the truths that provide life with purpose and meaning. And many who have asked those same questions have turned to the philosophies of the world for their answers. Many times we've turned to worldly philosophy without even realizing it. We have turned to those things which are of the world, seeking those answers which can only be found from God. Whether it's the books we read or the songs we hear on the radio, whether it's the political commentary or the social commentaries that are so populous in today's world. The philosophy of this world ensnares and encircles those who are not guarding against it. In our true search for the answers to the questions of life, many have 
been taken captive by the world's philosophy and enslaved to it. <coughs> Believers must therefore beware and guard against these philosophies and the ideas they present lest they fall into those same traps. Do you know that a believer in Jesus Christ can be enslaved to the philosophies of the world? Many a fine Christian man has had his life wrecked on the rocks of worldly philosophy because he did not guard himself. And that's what Paul is warning this church to do, and it is what I am warning you to do this morning. Guard yourself from the philosophies that the world presents. If we are to beware, there is a need to define just what worldly philosophy is. Now that's pretty common sense, right? If I'm going to tell you to watch out for something, I ought to tell you what you need to be watching out for, right? All right, let's do that. Paul defines worldly philosophy by saying these are, it is empty deceit based on human tradition and based on the elemental forces of the world and philosophies that are not based on Christ. They are philosophies, they are ideas that are based on the traditions and the wisdom of the ages. One of the great philosophers in the history of the world who gets very little credit is Aesop. Y'all know Aesop. All of us have been influenced by the philosophical works of Aesop. Why Aesop gave us that great philosophical postulate, slow and steady wins the race from the account of the tortoise and the hare. Aesop gave us that deep, deep philosophical truth. One in the hand is better than two in the bush. Aesop, man of wisdom, a man of knowledge, a man of, of great depth and perception. And look, I'm not saying that Aesop didn't have some good points. But what I will tell you is that many of us have been influenced by the idea slow and steady wins the race. And we've taken that to mean if I just stop here long enough, the world will come back around and I'll cross the finish line. It doesn't work that way. Worldly philosophy is rooted in the intellectual basis of the mind. If we can think it, it must be so, is where worldly philosophy draws its foundations from. And we build upon those things that have been laid before us. Worldly philosophy is like the African proverb that asks, what does the world sit upon? And they say an elephant. And the following question is, what does the elephant sit upon? A giraffe. And what does the giraffe sit upon? A water buffalo. But inevitably, you will run out of animals and you still are faced with the same question. What is the world truly sitting upon? The traditions of men, the wisdom of the ages, cannot and will not answer the questions of this life. As funny as it may seem, the wisdom of the ages illustrates itself in two very 
truth. Men want to know the answers to life's great questions. They want to know what is the origin of the universe and life. Humanity desires to know who man is and where did he come from. We strive to determine why we're here and where we're going. In the last two weeks, a lot of people have asked this question, where does evil come from? We look at the devastation that has taken place in Haiti and we ask, how can something so evil happen? Where does this evil come from? We ask, can this evil be controlled or even better abolished? We ask, is there a God and how can we know if there is a God? Is life upon this planet all there is? Or is there a life after death? And the questions go on and on and on. However, the point we must understand when looking at worldly philosophy is that it strives to answer these questions through an examination of what has been created. Worldly philosophy is based in the elementary and rudimentary ideas of the universe. That which has been created is all that worldly philosophy will examine. And this pursuit leads to a dead end for everything that is in this world, everything that has been created is temporary. Therefore, if a philosophy were to base itself upon the elements of the world, there is no permanent answer or solution to the questions of life. Why? Because any solution that is based on that, that which is created is only temporary. It cannot provide permanent solutions. The best that worldly philosophy or science has ever been able to do is to make life more comfortable or make life safer so that it lasts longer. But the fact is, is no matter how long you live, there is a day where you will face death and the question, is this all there is? Is there life beyond this? Is there a permanent answer to the questions we want answers to? And that is our need. A permanent solution, a permanent answer that can solve the questions of this life. And each of us desires to know the truth about the deep questions that probe the minds and souls of each and every one of us. We long for purpose and that permanent solution. How can this permanent and eternal truth be found? What must we do to find it? Well, that's a simple answer. We can't. Wow, not what y'all was thinking, huh? Yeah. No matter how hard we as individuals or as the human collective try, we cannot find eternal solutions to the questions of life. Why? Because the answer to these questions cannot be found through an examination of the created. 